Whenever we try to count animals in nature, we have a problem because animals aren't evenly distributed in nature. And this is true whether we're talking about corals on the reef, or trees in the forest, or insects in a paddock. So let's imagine we have a patch of reef, and we have lots of different corals spread across that patch of reef. Now imagine we have another site nearby and we want to quantify how many corals are at each of those sites and whether the two sites are the same. If we go to our first site, we might count six corals. If we go to our second site, we might count 23 corals. From these data, can we conclude that there are more corals at site two than site one? No, of course not, because at the second site, we counted a larger area and if we want to compare sites, the area we count must be standardized. That is, we must measure the same amount of area at each site. Transects are one method we use to standardize counts of animals in nature. And you can see a standard transect taped here in this image. The way this works is we roll the tape out in the area that we're trying to sample, whether it's a forest or a coral reef. We lay the tape out along the substratum, and then we measure the number of individuals in that unit of area. So in this case, we have a tape that's 50 meters long. We're gonna measure an area that's two meters wide, and we'll swim along this area, counting the different types of corals present in this standard area. In this case, we have two orange corals, three purple corals, two light blue corals, and so on. So we can use these data because we know the area we've sampled to calculate how many of different types of corals we have per unit area. This also allows us to compare different sites because we've always sampled that same amount of area. On coral reefs, we often use video transects to count corals and fish. You can see the transect here laid out along the reef, and you can see a diver swimming along the transect counting corals and fish. You might be thinking to yourself, how do we standardize the area we're counting from a video? There's a couple of different ways we can do this, and today we'll practice one way, which is converting the video to a set of photos, making sure that those individual photos don't overlap each other, and then counting the corals present in each photo. If we then want to compare different sites, all we need to do is make sure we count the same number of photos for each transect at each site. And we also need to be careful when we're making the video that we swim at the same speed so that we can count the same corals in the same way, and that we're the same height above the reef substratum in each video, so that we've got the same width of video in each case. In this example, we'll count the different coral morphologies separately so that we can work out their relative abundance. That is, we want to know how many of each type of coral is present at our sampling site. To do this, we'll need to create a data sheet, and we'll usually make a data sheet that looks something like this. We have our different coral types listed, and we have space where we can keep a tally of the number of those coral types along our transect. If we're doing this underwater, as we swim along, we'll count all of the corals that we'll see and we'll mark them on the sheet using the telly. If we're counting from images on the computer, it's a little easier to keep count and I'll show you that in a moment. So here we have our video transect. It's a transect of a site which we have permanently marked around Orpheus Island. You can see we have a picket in the ground and we're swimming along the transect which is laid out along the reef substratum. We're keeping at a fixed height above the transect so that we're measuring a constant area each side of the transect. We can use this video and convert it into overlapping photos or still images from the video and we can use those photos to count how many corals of different coral types are present at our reef. 
Here's our first image. You can see lots of different branching corals here, here, here. In fact, in this image, most of the corals are branching corals. One thing to be aware of when we're counting from images like this is we need to make sure we don't overestimate the number of corals present in this patch of reef. To do that, we only count corals if they overlap on one side and at the bottom of the image. If corals overlap the top or the left-hand side of the image, then we won't count them. So in this image, we have a lot of different branching corals and we've marked them all here with the letter B. We also have two soft corals marked with the letter S and we have one coral which is an other scleractinium or an other stony coral, not a branching one. So in this image in total we have 28 branching corals, two soft corals and one other hard coral, remembering those categories we had on our datasheet. Now let's look at another image. Again, we'll only count corals if they overlap on the right hand side or the bottom of the image. You can see, first off, just from looking at the, this image, there aren't as many corals in this patch of reef. And we also have lots of little clams here. You can see them, they're quite distinctive with this wavy margin and this central area. In this image, we do still have lots of branching corals with, marked with the letter B. We have some other stony corals, and we have two mound-shaped corals. In total, 17 branching, two massive or mound-shaped, and two other hard corals. Let's look at another image. In this image, again, we have lots of branching corals. We have five mound-shaped or massive corals, and we have two other hard corals. In total, 24 branching, five massive, and two other hard corals. Now let's tally up all of these numbers to work out the relative abundance of these different types of corals at our site. So when we're calculating the relative abundance, we're trying to work out what proportion of the corals we've counted have a branching morphology, what proportion of the corals are massive or mound-shaped, and what proportion are soft corals. We have our list of coral categories running down this way, branching, massive, other hard corals, and soft corals and we have the numbers reported from our different images. In total, we counted 83 corals in these three images, and 69 of those corals, or 83%, were branching. So most of the corals in this particular area of reef have a branching shape. The mound-shaped other hard coral and soft corals have a lower relative abundance. There's fewer of them as a proportion of the total coral community in this site.